When comparing simple interest and compound interest, the compound interest method is more realistic. The compound interest method takes the interest and reinvests it at regular intervals. So in simple interest, you are only reinvesting the original amount, the principal. However, in compound interest, you will be not only investing the original amount, but then whatever interest you gained through the previous year. Here's an example. This is the exact same example that I used in the previous video, so you can kind of compare the two and see what the difference is. We're going to have the exact same amount invested and then the exact same interest rate. So in the previous video, we showed that when you multiply them two together, you're going to get $50 as your reward for investing in this company. And in total, at the end of the year, you're going to get your original principal plus the interest, and that's $1,050. Now, instead of having the $1,000 again as your principal, we're going to have the new amount that we just earned, this $1,050. So that additional $50 is also going to earn interest this time and that's the two dollars and fifty cents. So notice that it's more than the year before. If we ended up listing all of these numbers into a sequence, we'll notice that it's a geometric sequence. In fact, if we decide to graph all this information, it's an exponential graph. So down here is the equation for the compound interest, where A is your future amount, the amount at the end of the time of the investment or loan. Now P stands for your principal, that didn't change from your simple interest, it's just your original amount that was borrowed or invested. Your I and your N, those are very similar to your R and your T in simple interest. So this is still the interest rate and this is kind of like, in a way, like your time. However, both of them are affected by something called a compounding period. So the compounding period is each period of time for which a compound interest is earned or charged. Now, what does that exactly mean? Let's take a 5% for example. If you get 5% per annum, which means per year in interest, but they're gonna compound it annually, that means they're gonna give you the 5% once a year. So a one-shot deal, 5%, you get it, there you go. However, if they compound it semi-annually, that means maybe at the beginning of the year and then maybe in the middle of the year, so twice a year, they're going to give you not for 5% each time, but they're going to split the 5% in half and give you 2.5% and then 2.5% and then a grand total of 5% in that year. So one more time, if they decide to give you the 5% per annum, so the entire year, but they give it to you quarterly, then they're going to split the 5% up into quarters and give them to you every, say that would be what, three months. Okay, so there's monthly compounding periods, weekly, and every other week, which should mean the 52 divided by 2, which would be 26 times a year, and then we have daily as well. Okay, so before we start learning how to um, apply that equation, why don't we figure out how to calculate your I and calculate your N. So for instance, if they said they were going to give you 6% per annum, so for the entire year, but they're going to compound semi-annually, you'll need to know that semi-annually means twice a year, and that means that you're going to get 3% or 0.03 one time and then the next time, and that would be the entire year then for a grand total of the 6%. If they gave you 5% for the entire year, but they compounded weekly, we're going to have to split it up into 52 pieces, and you would get this much for every 52 of those pieces for a grand total of the 5% in the entire year. Now your N is also affected by your compounding period, so maybe you'll be getting interest four times a year but for five years. So instead of saying your T value, which would have been just the five years, you will now have your N value, which is how many times are you actually getting the interest throughout that five years. So that would be a total of 20 times because you get the interest four times a year for five years. Okay, so bi-weekly is 26 times a year for two years is 52 interest payments.
Let's take a look at some bigger questions now. So number three, Melanie wants to take a music technology course. So she borrows $2,000 at an interest rate of 4.25% per annum compounded annually. So again, that means that she's going to get the 4.25% per year, but she's going to get that in a one shot deal once per year. And she plans to do this for five years. So how much will Melanie owe after the five years? What I like to do is make a list of all my knowns and unknowns on the left hand side and then start calculating with the equation on the right hand side. So we want to know after five years how much her debt is going to be. But her original debt was $2,000. That's our principal. The interest rate is the percentage as a decimal. But then it's going to be affected by the compounding period. Remember, we're going to divide it by your compounding period, which was 1. So that's our new I value. And then we're going to find our new N value. Take the number of years, and we're going to times it by the compounding period. In this case, we get the same number. Now what you're going to do is just input everything into your equation and solve. So here's your P, bracket 1 plus your I, bracket to the power of N. Brackets first, then you do the exponents, and then you multiply last. So here's your final amount. She's going to owe $2,462.69. How much interest would she have to pay then? Well, if this is what she's going to pay after five years and she originally borrowed this much, then the difference should be the amount that she had to pay as extra. So $462.69 will be her interest. Here's our last question. Number four, Catherine is starting a small business. She applies for an $8,000 loan, which she plans to repay in four years. She is told by the loan officer that the amount payable when the loan is due is $11,501.24. So what rate of interest compounded annually is Catherine being charged? That means that we're probably looking for our I. They've given us our future amount. So this is how much is going to be due at the end of four years. She originally borrowed $8,000. The number of years is 4, but that's going to be affected by our compounding period, which is annually. So we're going to multiply that by 1. Now that I have all my numbers, I'm just going to input them into the formula. So your A is going to go here. We have our P of $8,000. And then we have our N is 4. And I is trapped all the way in here. What we're going to do is we're now going to solve for i, and we're just going to bring everything to the other side. So the 8,000 should go over first, and we do that through division on both sides. Once I divide this out, I'm going to get this number, and I've approximated, so I put that little approximation dot. The next step would be to get rid of those brackets, but outside of the brackets is the power of 4. So I'm going to have to take the fourth root of both sides to get rid of that 4. Then what I'm going to have is the 1 plus i, and let's get rid of that 1 by subtracting on the other side. I'm left with something like this for my i. Now if we think back, your i should be a percentage, so we're just going to multiply that by 100 and get 9.5%. That means that if she was going to owe this much amount of money after four years, she must have been charged 9.5% uh, per annum compounded annually.